The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network, Exxon TV, and on shortwave from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Our toll free number is 1 877 528 Now that's toll free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. My email address is xzone at talkstarradio.com. On MSN Messenger, you can chat with me here in our studios at talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And if you'd like to watch, listen, and chat, go to www.xzonetv.com. And our main website is xzoneradio.com. My guest this hour is Harry Medved. He is the world's leading authority on movie locations. He is the author of the best-selling St. Martin's Press travel guide, Hollywood Escapes, now in its third printing, and previously co-wrote with his radio host, film critic brother, Michael Medved, four pioneering books about bad movies, including the 50 worst films of all time and the Golden Turkey Awards. Uh, They made... uh, Let's see, we made famous in such movies as Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Do you remember that? Oh, and uh, Ed Wood's A Plan 9 from Outer Space. Currently, um, Harry works for the nation's leading moviegoer destination, Fandango, where he is head of PR. And he has previously headed up communications for Yahoo Movies, Warner Brothers, Online, and Screen Actors Guild. And uh, Harry, welcome to the X Zone. How are things in your neck of the woods? Oh, it's great. Thank you so much. And it's you know great to be doing your show because I think you really need like a psychic to figure out what's going on in Hollywood these days. Let's what's see. Uh, make money. Yeah. Well, you know what? It doesn't take a psychic. It just takes a box office, a giant screen, and a place where you sell popcorn, and you can make all types of money. That's true, but I, I really feel like you know I need to lean towards people in uh, the paranormal community like yourself to kind of help me figure out like uh, what is going on these days. Well, we'll do our best, and uh, certainly uh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, uh, in my predictive prowess as the guy in charge of the Exxon, is going to be another smash hit for Harrison Ford. I think that you're really going out on a limb, Rob. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I think this limb is more secure than the American economy. <laughs> yeah, that is the only thing that is for certain this summer. Yep. You know, it's uh, right now the film is 55% of all ticket sales, which is just completely dominating all the ticket sales at Fandango.com. People are so excited about this movie. We did a poll of all the moviegoers back in March and April saying, of all the films coming out this summer, what do you want to see? And, of course, everyone picked Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It was, 80, I think, 82% of all people voting said that's the film. So um, we know it's going to clean up this weekend. The question is how much. Some analysts are talking about a $300 million weekend. Yeah. I, I don't think that's at all possible. Um, some people are saying it's closer to like 200 Some people are saying 150 So that's we just have to see how big is it going to be. Is it going to beat Spider-Man 3, which was a huge opening mm-hmm. last year, or is it going to be kind of a mild performer? Why do you think uh, everyone is so intent on seeing Indiana Jones again? Well, I, once again, I think the X-Zone has a lot to do with it. I mean, it's, there's great interest in the things unknown, <laughs> going all the way back to Plan 9 from Outer Space, as you pointed out. Yeah. And as you can tell from the title, um, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, there is kind of an X-Zone factor to this movie. This um, nice. Some people are going to love that part of the film, by the way, and some people will be sorely disappointed because it's got a little bit of Spielberg's Close Encounters in it. 
I don't want to give too uh, much away. All right. You and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be back in two minutes. My special guest this hour is Harry Medved, and uh, Harry is going to be with us this entire hour. We're also going to be talking about um, sex in the city, and we're also going to be talking about uh, a vacation where you can actually vacation on location. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network. And if you'd like to find out more about Harry, uh, you can visit Fandango.com. The Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard, continues on the other side of this two-minute break, right here from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Exxon Nation, don't go. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Hi, this is Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout, here on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. I would like to invite all of our listeners to the second annual Parunity Conference, January 27th through the 29th in Felsmere, Florida. We have some exciting speakers, including Brian Kano from The Haunted Collector, author Andrea Perrin, whose book inspired the hit movie The Conjuring, and our own Rob McConnell. There are events for the public as well as opportunities for paranormal teams to come together to share information. We also have opportunities for our guests to participate in some investigations of Felsmere's most haunted locations. Check out my website at www.paranormalstakeout.com or www.paranormalfbi.com for times and details. Hope to see you there. Harry Medved is our special guest of this hour, Exonation. Now, we were talking briefly about Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And it leads the list as uh, the summer's uh, most anticipated movie, with fan interest nearly double that of uh, the nearest movie. And uh, the uh, the Dark Knight ranks second, and Sex and the City ranks third among 
the summers must cease. You know, uh, the um, Indiana Jones uh, saga reminds me of... Uh, of the uh, Star Trek movies, the uh, Star War movies, and even Spielberg's Close Encounters. Um, it, it seems that sci-fi is as popular today as it was years ago. Absolutely. And what, I think what's kind of bold about this one is that it, it feels a little bit more like George Lucas and Steven mm-hmm. Spielberg at work here. Um, yeah. And a lot of people said that it really was Lucas calling the shots on the fourth Indiana Jones. Because, you know, the, the first three were really all about action-adventure. Mm-hmm. This one definitely has that sci-fi element, and kind of there's a spookiness about it. it it's set in 1957 uh, during the Cold War, and it's kind of like X-Files meets Indiana Jones. I mean, he's uh, he is kidnapped by the Ruskies, and uh, they feel like he's the guy who knows where to find this crate that's over in Area 51. So the actual opening of the film, I'm not giving anything away because you'll see it in the first five minutes, uh, takes place near Roswell, New Mexico. So um, that already by itself is pretty interesting, is putting Indiana Jones in that milieu. And um, you mentioned before, Rob, about uh, how there are places where you can vacation on location. Yes. Well, so that whole opening is actually shot in New Mexico. It's one of the few things in the film where it actually was shot where it's supposed to be taking place. It wasn't quite shot at Roswell, but um, it was shot over in a town called Deming, D-E-M-I-N-G, New Mexico. And uh, they actually saved one of the sets from the film, and I'm not supposed to talk about it until the movie opens, which is not till tomorrow night, but um, the set that they saved is going to be a tourist attraction. I think it opens up on Friday in Deming, New Mexico, so if anyone finds themselves heading to that part of the state, um, they'll find a, a certain home that appears in the very opening of the film right near Roswell that has been resuscitated and rebuilt and uh, opened up as an Indiana Jones tourist attraction in New Mexico. Well, wow, that's that's uh, that's really interesting. Are there a lot of places uh, throughout the US that are that are turning sets into vacation lo- uh, locations? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, just talking about Indiana Jones once again. Um, mm-hmm. a good chunk of the film is a great chase scene in the movie that takes place in the Peruvian jungle. And of course, they um they barely left the country when they were shooting this movie. They actually shot that in Hawaii. So they went over to um, a little private area near Hilo, mm-hmm. and they stayed at a bed and breakfast where they shot a whole waterfall chase sequence. And uh, that bed and breakfast is also planning to open up and try to create Indiana Jones tours and saying, here's where Harrison Ford slept, and you know, and here's where Steven Spielberg and George Lucas were wandering around the waterfall. So, um, you know, there are surveys that are done by I think there's a company called the Annals of Tourism Research that estimates like there's a 60 percent uptick in tourism after a movie has been shot on a location that they can, you know, think about the Field of Dreams, for instance, in Iowa. Oh, yeah. That's a real place that was actually created for the movie, and they decided to just keep it standing, that little baseball field, and now it's like this huge tourist attraction in that small town in Iowa. People want to go see where Kevin Costner had his Field of Dreams. Yeah, and people want to go and see where the Amityville massacre happened, and and the list goes on and on and on. And you know what? Hell, if you've got money to spend, why not? However, yeah. I just like to watch the movie and let's get on with life. You know, it's just like a- another great movie that was out a couple of years ago, uh, yeah. The Da Vinci Code. Right, sure, that was huge. Uh, I mean, look, you know, people, a lot of kids would never be yeah. caught dead in the Louvre, right? Exactly. Kind of like a real boring museum, but then you see The Da Vinci Code, it's like, ooh, mm-hmm. this is kind of a cool place. Yeah. So um, I think that, you know, I, I like to think that movies are doing a great favor for tourism. As well and as I historians. Do, yeah, historians too. I mean, it gets yeah. people involved in history. Yeah. Um, it, it gets them thinking about science. And uh, I think it, uh, in my case, you know, the reason I love movie locations so much is when I was growing up, going to the movies was a big escape for me. In fact, we did a poll on Fandango again where we asked people um, what's the top reason for going out to the movies this summer. And they all say it's, it's to have a little escape from reality to kind of take you to another place, another time. And that's why movie location travel makes so much sense, because that's why people go to the movies. Mm-hmm. They, they want to escape their humdrum existences. They want to go to this other world. And so when they see it on the big screen, they kind of say, wow, wouldn't it be cool if I actually went there? They want to see some incredible grandeur on the big screen. Or they just say, take me there. And guess what? More and more people are now revealing those secrets and saying, okay, here's where they shot. You know, uh, Chronicles of Narnia and Lord of the Rings. And it did great wonders for New Zealand. They're saying, here's where we shot Harry Potter, and look what mm-hmm. happened in England. That's true. And now, of course, it's happening in America, all over the country. one 877 is toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. Our special guest to this hour is Harry Medved. And, uh, Harry, uh, the 
the tour, tourism industry is, is, is just one part of the spin-off of the movie industry, but when we look at the movies and the amount of money the movies are making, is this a reflection of how how screwed up society is? Is it a reflection of how uh, stressed we are that we look towards the movies that we go to to put us into another realm of reality just for that <laughs> 90 or 120 minutes? Oh, Rob, I don't know. I mean, do you think it's uh, is it screwed up for us to, you know, read a book and, uh, and escape from reality that way? I think that, you know, I don't, I don't think society was any worse in the 1930s yeah. when people went to the movies every week before they had TV that was mm-hmm. available, you know, at home. Um, I think it's just it, it's one of those um, fantasies that people have about, you know, great storytelling, and they want to um, take a little escape. So I don't, I don't know. If, I mean, you tell me. Do you think that means that society is degenerating? Well, I don't think it's degenerating. I, th- I certainly think that society is screwed up. Uh, you know, I think yeah, that we're... I, I don't know. When, when was there a good era in society when people, you know, when, when would you say it was like a, a golden age for uh, North America? Golden age for Mo- North America? That's yeah. simple. Before the Western, uh, the, before the Europeans came over here and screwed it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they didn't have movies back then. Man, I guess, so. No, but you know what? They, uh, I love movies. Yeah. I, I really do, and you know, I, I enjoy going with my wife, sitting down, watching a movie, and it takes us away from our world of reality, and it allows us to relax and enjoy each other's company. And and you're you're out of the house, you're away from the office. And I, yeah. I, I appreciate the hard work that goes into a movie. Well, that's good. And I, I think the point that I'm trying to make, Rob, is that, you know, um, this summer, mm-hmm. people are calling it the subprime summer because people just don't have the money to go on vacation as much as they used to. And so a lot of people are just thinking, you know, we'll yeah. take a little mini escape and they're just going to go to the movies because at least for two hours they have a quick little mini escape in a nice air-conditioned theater. Yeah. Where, um, you know, it, okay, so movies are expensive, no question about it. It's about 10 bucks where I live here in Los Angeles. But uh sure is a lot cheaper than uh, taking a tank of gas and oh, going out on the road these days. Oh, exactly. No two ways about it. No yeah. two ways about it. And it's something that the entire family can do. And, it, you know, like uh, when, I, when I talk about a screwed-up society... You've got kids with iPods. You've got uh, you've got them watching the uh, you know watching television, playing on the internet, doing right. video games, S- and, and the family unit today and and you know sociologists will tell you this is is basically stagnant, right? Because but people then, aren't doing anything together and going to the movies. I think is a wonderful way of, of doing something as a family unit. Right, and then real quickly, Rob. I mean, to your point, and I think it's a very good point. That's why the movies are so great. Is because yeah. it is something you do together. It's not like a Game Boy or an iPod. You're mm-hmm. tuning out in front of your family during dinner. It's it's appointment viewing. It's one of those few things where somebody said the reason they're going to Sex in the City next weekend is because it's one of those few water cooler moments that you don't get anymore because people aren't watching TV at the same time they're TiVoing all the time. That so, that that is so true. It, so it's it's an actual appointment. We're all going to go yeah. out and see the same thing at the same time, and we're all going to talk about it. You're you're all together. It's not like you're off in your own little corner. It, it's what we call here a date night. Yeah, or audience mm-hmm. participation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sex in the City. It's uh, let's see, listed number three on your list as uh, one of the uh, as the, one of the most anticipated uh, summer movies of 2008. Apparently, there are viewing parties. Yeah, this is something that once again I, I need your help, Rob, okay. because I think right. this is a paranormal event for me. I, I just don't get it as a straight male because mm-hmm. I'm not a huge Sex in the City fan. My wife is, but I just didn't think anybody would actually go out and see this movie. I just thought mm-hmm. like if they made a feature film of Seinfeld, would you be running out to see that? It wouldn't appeal to me. You know, the show's over. Who cares? Exactly. No, I, I uh, to be honest with you, I think I've seen about 15 minutes of Sex in the City. Right. Now, you talk to um, a young woman in her 30s, mm-hmm. and chances are she thinks you and I are both crazy. Well, that's because, because she, can, she can relate to it. Um, yeah, and it's just, it, it has this cult yeah. following that is just unbelievable, and we are finding... These, these insane group sales where people are buying six or seven tickets per transaction because they're planning next Friday, May 30th, a big Sex in the City viewing party where they're going to go out for dinner afterwards. I think mm-hmm. we, we have a survey going on right now on Fandango. If you go to um, the movie landing page for Sex in the City, you can take it yourself. But it's like 95% of the people buying tickets are women. And uh, it's like 80% of them said they're going to have these little Sex in the City parties where they're going to go out for drinks afterwards and have Cosmos. 
And for them, it's like a chance to reconnect with old characters. And once again, that's just appointment viewing that they don't have anymore. It also sounds like uh, what these uh, what these uh, ladies in their 30s are, are doing is they're having uh, growing up or mature pajama parties, going out for the dinner, watching the movie, and then going out for a few drinks afterwards. Yeah, they might find that that might, that might sound a little condescending. I don't know, but oh, I don't again, think it does. I, th- I well, think my it's... wife has told me I sound condescending on the radio talking about Sex and the City. So, I, but you know, somebody uh, the New York Times said it's kind of like Star Wars for chicks. You know, it's like it's it's, it's a chick over fanboys. Yeah. It's, it's a chance for them to kind of get out, and ha- this is their own little um, cult following. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there you go. So uh, maybe some of your callers can call in and then berate us for being such male chauvinists. Oh, they're a good bunch, my listeners. Okay, good. Uh, the Dark Knight, what do we know about this? Dark Knight, you know, we, we did a poll once again on Fandango.com asking which performances this summer mm-hmm. are you most excited about? New performances where you've taken a familiar character and a new actor jumped into the role and gave it fresh life. Speaking of fresh life, it's very sad. The winner is somebody who's no longer with us, and that's, of course, Heath Ledger, who plays yeah. the Joker in the new Batman movie, The Dark Knight. And um, he is just so truly terrifying as this demonic Joker that uh, people are already talking about an Oscar nomination posthumously for Heath Ledger. Um, he's just that good. And uh, it's, it's, I think it's going to be the movie that actually could surprise a lot of people as the top grossing film of the summer. I think it could beat Iron Man and Indiana Jones. All right, let's talk more about this when we come back from this uh, news break at the bottom of the hour. Harry Medved is our special guest, and he uh, you can find out more about uh, the movies that we're talking about at Fandango. Dot com, F-A-N-D-A-N-G-O dot com. Take the surveys. Harry and I will return on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon TV, and on shortwave from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My producer tonight at Master Control in White Springs, Florida, is the one and only Batman. We'll all be back on the other side of the news. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and this portion of the Exxon is being brought to you by Karen Bentley's Sugar-Free Miracle Diet. www.sugarfreemiracle.com My special guest this hour is Harry Bedved. We're talking about movies and uh, another uh, return of we have the X Files uh, that is spo- that's coming out this summer. I we want sure to do. believe now. Do you think that the X Files has a chance of being resuscitated? Oh yeah, no, we're excited about it because um, we also did this poll asking people of all the locations that you see on mm-hmm. the big screen this summer, which one would you most like to follow? Where would you like to um, visit and take a little vacation on location? And believe it or not, it was the X-Files, I want to believe, British Columbia. Um, they shot a good chunk of that movie over in Pemberton Valley. Mm-hmm. And we know for a fact that David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson and Chris Carter, the film's creator, uh, stayed at the Pemberton Valley Lodge. Um, there's some incredibly stark snowbound sequences that were shot up there. And so, uh, yeah, I think, I think it actually could do very well on the big screen. Do you, do you think that uh, the X-Files will be coming back to the little screen? No, 
I don't think they have time for it. I think that, you know, um, we actually uh, had someone who worked on the show who worked here in our office at Fandango, so she kind of gave us the inside scoop because um, she used to be Chris Carter's assistant, and she just said that, you know, the daily grind on that show is just something it's, it's easier not to live with. And the fact that they can go off and make a movie like this for a year or so mm-hmm. and then take a rest is, is really nice. So, uh, I don't Another... think we're going to do a daily show. Another movie that uh, that uh, made your top five was The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Yeah, that surprised me, man. I got to tell you, because I, once again, I'm not a huge fan of the first <laughs> Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Are you, Rob? No, I'm not. You know, and I think it's just this residual uh, indie fever. I mean, it's just because The Mummy is so much like an Indiana Jones movie yeah. that people, you know, after they see Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Then they're going to go out and see Mummy Three, so I think that's that's where that's at. Uh, you know, also maybe because Jet Li's in it, um, it's got a good um, Chinese cast, and mm-hmm. of course a lot of the film was shot in China. It's coming out right around the time of the Olympics, so uh, they're probably getting a, a good ride on the wave of publicity. Oh, timing is everything, right? There you go. Most anticipated new character portrayal. Uh, let me see. Uh, first on the list was Heath Ledger as as the Joker in The Dark Knight. Yeah. As you were saying, it's you know the, that people are looking at him to win a uh, an Oscar. Yeah, you know it's something that hasn't happened since James Dean won an Oscar uh, posthumously for his role in Giant, and uh, I think it'd be a nice gesture. I don't know if he's actually going to win the Oscar, but I think he will probably get a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Yeah, he should. And well deserved. He's yeah. he did actually one of his very last interviews for us uh, here at Fandango talking about The Dark Knight. And so you can actually see it if you go to our site. It's Fandango.com and just um, look up The Dark Knight. You'll see the interview. And, you know, it's one of those things where I was actually doing the editing of the interview, and I kept looking at it. He kept fidgeting. He couldn't control himself. He was he looked completely wired. And everybody in the editing room said, what the heck is wrong with Heath Ledger? And then yeah. just a few days later, he passed away, and it just all felt so horrible. He was such a wonderful actor. But uh, he, he talked about how much he loves the Batman TV series as a kid and how he used to pretend like he was Batman climbing mm-hmm. up the side of the the buildings, and uh, how he was intimidated about the role because he has such fond memories of Jack Nicholson as the Joker. And uh, but he took on the role anyway, despite Nicholson's uh, protestations. Steve Carroll as uh, Maxwell Smart in Get Smart. Yeah, that was I think ingenious casting. I, I, did you ever watch uh, the Get Smart TV oh, gosh, show when you were sure. a kid? Yep, sure did. Yeah, and so I think um, you know there's very few people who could fill the the uh, walkie-talkie shoes of Don Adams, but uh, Steve Carell definitely has got to be right up there. And I love the idea of Anne Hathaway from The Princess Diaries and Brokeback Mountain playing um, Agent 99. I think she's going to be terrific. And uh, that film actually could surprise a lot of people, too. It's uh, from one of the directors of one of the uh, Naked Gun movies, Peter Siegel. So it, It could be pretty fun. I, I was surprised uh, when I went through your list earlier this afternoon when you uh, when you sent it over that uh, Get Smart didn't make the top five, and yet The Mummy did. Yeah, well, once again, I think that <laughs> if you look at the top roles, Get Smart, people are excited to see what Steve Carell could do yeah. in new roles. I mean, is the movie among the, the most anticipated films of the summer? Maybe not. But I think people want to see what Steve Carell can do as Maxwell Smart. Um, but, you know, we, we offer all this information, which... <laughs> a lot of trivia, but people love this stuff. Yeah. Um, the theme song to get smart. Remember the dun dun mm-hmm. dun theme song sure where he's walking through the uh, all the yep. doors that keep slamming. It was written by a guy who only wrote this one piece of music. He never did anything else. And uh, we've been trying to track him down. His name is Irving Sassmassy. So if anyone out there knows where Irving Sassmassy is, you mean this? There music? you go. Look at that. Wow, Batman! What a producer! Way to go. That is it. That the guy is only it. wrote one piece of music that, that was ever, you know, made into a movie that was used for a movie or a TV show, and that's it. A one-hit wonder. There you go. So he's hopefully getting residuals this year from the movie, but we sure would love to track him down for an interview. Ed uh, Edward Norton as Bruce Banner in The Incredible Hulk. Yeah, have you seen the trailer for that, Rob? No, have I haven't. In the preview, it's no. Because uh, once again, I got to be honest. I I liked the first Hulk movie. Yeah. I think I probably was the only one. But, uh, you know, the movie with Eric Bana and Jeff, mm-hmm. Jennifer Connelly, directed by Ang Lee, I thought it was pretty good. Everybody hated it. But the reason they hated it is because the uh, the Hulk was just so silly looking. He was just this giant CGI character, and he didn't have even the humanity of Lou Ferrigno from the TV yeah. show. And that was pretty looked, bad. Yeah, it looks like they did the same thing for this one. This is like a, a remake, what, just two or three years later. And instead of Hulk, it's the Incredible Hulk. 
And uh, I don't know, the buzz is not great on that one, but we sure hope that um, we'll be wrong. We'd like to be surprised. We talked about Anne Hathaway as Agent 99 and Get Smart, and uh, number five, Angelina Jolie as Fox and Wanted. Yeah, now that, once again, is a, it's a graphic novel. There's a lot of anticipation for that with James McAvoy mm -hmm. from Atonement, and uh, that could be a real kick-butt movie. I think that people love Angelina Jolie when she's doing action, and this is you know, a pretty big return to action like she had in Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Brad Pitt, and I think, uh, I think this could be a lot of fun. The all-time favorite action movie star list, um, top five, Harrison Ford, number one. Yep. Bruce Willis, number two. Number three, Will Smith. Four, Mel Gibson. Five, Nicolas Cage. Well, I can't argue with that. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where <laughs> that's why we think yeah. Indiana Jones is going to be so huge, because there's such appreciation for Harrison Ford, and we really should talk about him in the movie. There really is no movie without him. I mean, yeah. imagine trying to do Indiana Jones with any other actor. He's Impossible. so good in the movie, and yeah. he's so convincing. The guy is 64 years old or something like that. Mm hmm and he's still, you know, swinging around from rooftops. And, I mean, obviously a lot of it's a stunt double, but he just looks the part. He looks great. I'll tell you who does not look great in the movie is his co-star, Karen Allen, who played Marion in the first Raiders of the Lost Ark. And she supposedly was a yoga teacher when they found her. And, man, they just has way too many close-ups of Karen Allen for my money. I just oh. felt like, oh, please, just keep her to a cameo status. Don't give her a supporting role. She also, I mean, in all fairness to Karen Allen, is such a wonderful actress. She had nothing to do in this movie. It was a thankless role. I mean, she really didn't have any business. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that uh, Harrison Ford was in American Graffiti. That's right. He, yeah. was, um, he was in George Lucas's, I think it was one of his first films, if not his first. Actually, it was not his first because, of course, he did THX 1138 before yeah. American Graffiti. But, yeah, Harrison Ford was uh, that big bruiser who takes on Paul Lamatt, and He's like a big bad guy who's, you know, doing that little race sequence. Yeah, and, of he's course... You know, he's, he's done some wonderful movies. Uh, yeah, we have a list, um, you know, once again, on Fandango.com of the top ten greatest Harrison Ford moments. And one of the reasons we like these lists is we love to get some debate going online. Sure. So we've already had, God, ten emails since the list went up today of people saying, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, you know, the American Graffiti, that was a great moment, but how could you not put down Witness? Or where's Air Force One? And yeah, Air Force that. One was a good one. Yeah, he was great in that, too. Okay, uh, Bruce Willis. There's another all-time favorite of mine. Yeah, I think people love Bruce Willis, especially for that one-liner, yippee mother, you know what her. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> as John McClane and, and Die Hard. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's when you think about action movies, you think about the summertime as the time that people want to see action films. That's when you want to get out of the house and you mm -hmm. just you want a good old-fashioned popcorn movie. And uh, that's what Indiana Jones really delivers, I think, in spades this year. Will Smith, um... Well, Will Smith Day is interesting because he's got a movie black. coming out that nobody knows about. It's called Hancock, and he plays a kind of drunken superhero who's living on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles who is called back into action when the bad guys are acting up. And uh, that's another movie that we'll see if, if it's any good. I mean, it, it, the trailer looks like a lot of fun, hoping it's going to be a lot of fun, but um, the buzz is not great on that one. Mel Gibson, haven't heard a lot about him lately. No, <laughs> you know, I'm surprised he made our list. And once again, these, this is not my list. These mm -hmm. are the moviegoers who voted. And uh, he is finally making a return to the big screen as an actor um, in a movie that I think comes out two years from now, another action picture. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, all is forgiven in Hollywood and people kind of get on with their lives. And mm, uh, that accept, will uh, be Mel interesting. As an actor again. And then, of course, Nicolas Cage. What can you say about Nicolas Cage? Well, he's just a, he's a wonderful yeah. um, actor with a lot of range. I mean, he does everything from, you know, Leaving Las Vegas, which is a very serious movie, to National Treasure, which is kind of like his own version of yeah. Indiana Jones. And uh, it's great to see him as a, such a versatile actor. He kind of does it all. And, uh, uh, and of course, uh, what's, what's his real last name? Um, Coppola. Coppola, that's right, yeah. Nicolas Cage is the nephew of Francis Ford Coppola. His, I believe his sister is Sofia Coppola? I want to say, or, or no, pardon me, it's his cousin, because Sofia Coppola, who is uh, the director of Lost in Translation and Marie Antoinette. But, you know, we're, we're excited about this summer, and that's why if anyone's interested in finding places where they can vacation on location, um, if you don't mind, Rob, I just want to tell people that the, the site to go to on Fandango, because it's a very specific area, okay. is fandango.com slash summer movies, and that's where they'll find all these suggestions of where to vacation on location, including the X-Files Pemberton Valley over in B.C., 
one eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is toll free uh, here at the Exxon and. Uh, about Fandango, one of the web's top movie and entertainment destinations, Fandango sells tickets to more than 15,000 screens. Exxon Nation, Fandango entertains and informs consumers with reviews, commentary, and trailers, and offers the ability to quickly select a film, plan where and when to see it, and conveniently buy tickets in advance. Fandango is available at www. Fandango.com. As as a movie insider, uh, Harry, where do you see the next generation of computers and CGI taking the viewer? Oh, well, the one that I really want to see is called Wally. It's a Pixar movie coming up in June. I think it comes out on June 27th. And um, what's interesting about it is that's a film where they employ technology to tell an almost classic silent film story hmm. about uh, this kind of like little lost robot um and i think uh you know that the more you can use technology and harness what we've learned about technology and and bring people to life and make more human looking characters the, the more exciting it is I, I actually was one of the big fans of beowulf i don't know if you saw that in 3d no. which i thought was really a really interesting mystical journey do you think theory of 3d is going to make a comeback Oh yeah, no, we know that for a fact. I mean, it's it's definitely you know, look at we had a huge bestseller at Fandango back in January with a film called Hannah Montana 3D, and obviously you know a lot of tweeners went to see the movie mm-hmm. because they were huge Miley Cyrus fans, and we sold tickets like hotcakes. We actually Fandango sold 31 percent of all tickets wow. for that movie, but part of it was the 3D element. In other words, if you're already paying ten dollars to go to the movies, which is a lot of money these days. Yeah. You know, why not give them some extra bang for your buck? So it's like, okay, well, you know what? If I'm going to get my butt out of the house, I've got to hire a babysitter, pay for parking. Well, at least it's in 3D. At least I'm going to have this immersive experience that's going to make it all worthwhile. So do I you think th- that's why, uh, why 3D is actually working really well for the box office. Do you think with the uh, DVDs coming out much faster now, available for consumer purchase and rental, that it's going to uh, take away from the theaters? I don't, I mean, I don't feel that way. I there are certain films, like The Dark Knight, mm-hmm. you know, the new Batman movie, you, you can't see that on DVD. There's just no way. That is a big screen experience. You want to, you know, you, Batman is, especially Christopher Nolan, who did Batman Begins. I mean, it's a visual feast. You just don't want to see it on DVD. Same thing with Indiana Jones. I mean, there's some incredible CGI effects in Indiana Jones where if you're watching it on a DVD, you, you would completely miss it. You wouldn't see the figures in the landscape. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I think... There's certain films that you just can't, you just can't wait for DVD. You gotta see it on the big screen. All right, stand by. You and I have to take our final uh, break for this hour. In the next hour, we will have Brian David Anderson joining us. We'll be talking about everything from earthquakes to moonquakes to much more as the Exxon continues on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario. Don't go away. We'll be back after this break. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com.
True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Mary Medved is our special guest, uh, www.fandango.com. Uh, first of all, Harry, thanks a lot for coming on the show. I hope that we have the pleasure of having you on again. Thank you, Robin. I, next time, I want you to tell me all about elongated skulls, because I thought that the whole thing was made up for uh, the kingdom of the crystal skull, but I guess you're probably the expert on it, right? Actually, uh, the uh, the elongated skulls are, are only found in three places, in the shadows of the Great Pyramid, the yeah. Nazca Plains, and uh, in uh, Central America. Well, there you go. It all figures in the movie. So you got to see the movie, and then will you do me a favor and call me afterwards and let me know what you think? That is a deal, my friend. Okay. One ta- one uh, final category that uh, I'd like to cover with you before we uh, leave in a few moments is going yeah. to be uh, the all-time favorite action movie character, Indiana Jones, number one. Number two, James Bond. Number three, Jason Bourne. Uh, let me see. Number four, Batman. Number five, Die Hard's John McClane. There you have it. A lot of popular things. And, you know, what I'm most excited about this summer is not the expected but the unexpected. The one sleeper that I think could come up yeah. is another kind of psychological thriller from M. Night Shyamalan. I can't remember pronounce the guy's last name. The guy who did The Sixth Sense and Signs. He's got a movie called The Happening, which is about all these people suddenly killing themselves, slitting yeah. their wrists and hanging themselves. And nobody can figure it out. And uh, there's just dead bodies galore, and the trailer is awfully spooky. You can see it on Fantango.com. Can't wait to see what the whole mystery is about. Yeah. He's always got some kind of good little twist in his films. Sounds like it's going to be a great summer for the moviegoers and a great way for the family to stay together and a great way to save a lot of money. I hope so. Although, don't take your family to see The Happening. It ain't for the kids. Well, that's... Uh, <laughs> it's rated R for a reason. <laughs> I would imagine so. Uh, what can we look forward to in the future at Fandango? Oh, well, we're just more and more showing people where they can take a vacation on location. Uh, the next thing we're going to cover is uh, the movie Mamma Mia with Meryl Streep, shot in Greece. The Greek islands were really popular this summer. There's another chick flick called Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2, shot in one of the Greek islands. So we're going to just keep showing people where they can vacation with the movies. Hey, we'll look forward to having you back on. I will call you, and in fact, we'll bring you back on, and I'll give you my honest-to-goodness opinion of Indiana Jones Love to hear it. You're, it's like the movie was made for you, Rob. Yeah. Thank you. I've never had a movie made for me. I've had a there few made go. about George me. There you go. and Stephen, I think we're channeling you or, or <laughs> must have been listening on a regular basis to your show. Well, geez. I should they hope They should so. have called it the X-Zone movie. I don't know why they didn't. Uh, you Maybe know, it sounded too much like the X-Files movie. Well, they, there's another thing. Chris Carter should have talked to me first. Absolutely, before he stole your title. What can I say? Hey, listen, it's been great having you on the show. Continued success to you and the fine people at Fandango, and you've got friends here in the X-Zone. Thanks so much, Rob. Take care. You take care, Harry. Bye-bye now. Harry Medved, uh, he is the, uh, let me see. Uh, He's one of the, he's the head guy for, he's in charge of uh, public relations at Fandango. He's previously headed up communications for Yahoo Movies, Warner Brothers Online, and the Screen Actors Guild. So the guy knows what he's talking about. It's going to be a great movie summer for you, XO Nation. And uh, as Harry and I were saying, it's a great way to keep the family together. And that's what we do here. Once a week, we have a date night. Get the family together, do something together, whether it's mini-putting, whether it's going to the beach, whether it's going out for supper, whether it's going over to one of the kids' houses uh, just for a barbecue, or hamburgers, hot dogs. Bring the family together and spend quality time with the family. That's what this world is missing now amongst other things. When we come back from the news at the top of the hour at six and a half minutes past, I'll be joined by Brian David Anderson. We're talking about earth changes, earthquakes, 
moon uh, moon gravitational influence, and much more as the Exxon continues right here on the Talkstar Radio Network from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. We'll be.